Today on Two Crazy Ketos, we're gonna make a chocolate cream pie. The keto chow version. Right, right after, after this. this. Hey, what's up family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews, we do recipe videos, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us on different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're gonna find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Yeah. So recently, Keto Chow reached out to us and asked us to participate in their holiday recipe challenge. What an honor, right? <laughs> like that was so cool. And we actually got uh, two different flavors. I mean, well, he did. No one wants me coming up with a recipe. But two flavors, one was eggnog and one was chocolate. And this was our chocolate entry. Yeah, so it took me a while to go back and forth. I was like, what am I gonna do with it? What do I do with chocolate that's kind of different? Something that like anybody could make like chocolate cupcakes or a chocolate cake or something like that so we ended up coming up with this chocolate cream pie mm -hmm. now I'm gonna give you fair warning this is a very fatty rich dessert and you're warning them I'm about warning this them. because some people don't like fatty rich desserts well the thing about it is is you can very easily overdo this dessert and even breaking it up into like 10 or 12 slices, it's still like almost 400 calories a slice. Oh, but it's such a happy 400 <laughs> calories. <laughs> well, let's go over what we're going to need for this. Now to make this a little bit shorter, uh, we already have our pie crust done. And if you haven't seen that, we're going to put a link right up over here on my head on how to make our coconut flour pie crust. It is a showstopper. Like I'm so glad that this like challenge was out there just because it ended up with you making this pie crust. Yeah, cause we had it, but like I hadn't quite perfected it and I perfected it for this recipe. Thank you recipe challenge. So now also down below is a link to just the pie crust recipe for our website. And it's also going to be uh, within the keto chow recipe challenge uh, that's linked down below as well. Cause what is cool about it is you can, with some minor tweaks, change it to a savory pie. Yeah, so let's go over what we're gonna need. So the first thing we're obviously going to need is we're going to need our pie crust. Look how cute it is. Now the pie crust recipe that you're gonna see linked down below, that will actually make two of those uh, disposable metal tins, like what are they, like eight and a half, nine inch tins. Yeah. Uh, but this is a, a super deep pie dish. So this is one complete recipe from that coconut flour. If you're using the smaller ones, you can just cut it in half, but you're probably gonna need a little bit less filling as well. But this makes such a nice presentation. It'll make a nice presentation. So we've already pre-baked it, and this is exactly what you want it to look like because this is not going back into the oven. So right. make sure your pie crust is completely baked. So we're gonna put that off to the side. Then from there, we only need a few ingredients. We need some heavy cream. And we recently just purchased- A lot of heavy cream. A ton of it. Okay. We're going to use uh, any kind of nut milk, almond milk, coconut milk. Um, this is the coconut, toasted coconut. This makes a nice flavor with this pie. It really does. Any kind of mixtures, any kind of the milks, just make sure it's completely unsweetened. You don't want to add a bunch of extra carbs or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're going to need some allulose. All right. Now you can use erythritol, I wasn't super happy with the way it came out because you had a little bit too much of a cooling effect for me. Uh, but one of the things that I'm really liking with allulose as I play with it more is it looks just like sugar, it tastes just like sugar, and it acts just like sugar when you cook it. Even when you take it and put it in your fingers, it's got that same consistency. It's not weird like, right, like the erythritols are. That's really awesome. Okay. Then we're gonna need some stevia because we're obviously trying to cut down a little bit on the sugar alcohols. We're going to need some cream cheese, an entire brick of it. That makes me really happy. Then we're going to need some mascarpone cheese. Isn't or, it? Or mar mascarpone, 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 mascarpone cheese. I've always called it mascarpone. So that you're gonna need that. Now, if you don't know what this is, this is an Italian cream cheese. And it's funny, because when I submitted the recipe to uh, Chris and Miriam, Chris immediately texted me back like, what's mascarpone cheese? And I'm like, it's an Italian cream cheese. 
It's a little bit fattier. If you don't have it, if you can't find it, you can use cream cheese. It just is going to taste better with that. Yeah, get that. Okay. Finally, we need some keto chow. Obviously. You can make this with any one of the sweet flavors. Uh, we're just using chocolate because that's what the recipe challenge was. You're gonna use one serving, which is one of these packets or one scoop. Don't use tomato. Don't. <laughs> Are you ready? Yes. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna move my coffee. We just tried the new Death, what is it? Death, Death Wish. Wish coffee. I mean, it's pretty strong. Okay, we're going to pull out my handy dandy KitchenAid because we rarely get to use this thing. We're so excited to see you. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our heavy whipping cream and we're going to whip this into whipped cream. We're gonna whip it good. Okay, so we're gonna. I'm just gonna put it in here. We're gonna raise this up. And again, if you don't have a KitchenAid, don't worry about it. You can use a regular blender. Idea, one cup of heavy whipping cream. You wanna double it in size so that you end up with about two cups until you have whipped cream, like forming nice stiff peaks. Put it on. Wait, I wanna get it all out of there. I need the residual cream for my coffee. And we're just gonna let this go now until we have whipped cream. Okay, I think we're good here. My arms are exhausted. <laughs> it definitely makes it easier to have this, um, but it's not gonna work if you only have like a quarter of a cup. Like you really need like at least a cup to do it. Always make a vat of whipped cream when you can. <laughs> do you wanna lick the whisk? Sure. <laughs> okay, we'll put this off to the side for a minute, but we are gonna need it again. I wanna lick the bowl. So, well that you can't lick because we're gonna need this. So you can see this is like the consistency we have. You see how like we can literally like turn it upside down and it's not falling. Paint That's with it. what we want. Fill the driveway patches. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just simply take this and we're gonna put it into another bowl and we're gonna put it in the refrigerator where we work on the next step. It's a bowl of happy. Okay, we can put that in the refrigerator. Now for the next step, you don't even have to clean the bowl because all we're gonna do now is combine uh, the mascarpone cheese and the cream cheese and eventually you're gonna be mixing it back up with the whipped cream. We're skipping that attachment because uh -oh. that's not gonna blend cream cheese very well. Oh, all right. And we're gonna move over to the beater and you can use, this is a, like a, an extra one that I bought on Amazon. I like the fact that it's got the silicone which kind of goes around and it scrapes the sides. It does a better job, but you can use the regular attachment that comes with a KitchenAid or again, your egg beaters. It's not an act, people. I really have no idea what I'm doing <laughs> in this room. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and again, raise this up. We're going to Open up our cream cheese, which do we have a knife to open this? Possibly. Okay, so easiest way to do this, slice and then dump. We say it's the easiest because every single time we use it, we're using the entire container. <laughs> like somebody may be just using a little bit of cream cheese. Well, we're using the entire package every time. Now, you don't have to have this softened. Like, this came literally right out of the refrigerator. It doesn't really matter. Actually, I like it better if I don't soften it. It's gonna take a little bit longer to blend it. Okay. Uh, but you won't have to chill it as long, you know, before you start cutting the pie. Right. Okay, next thing we do, we're gonna take, again, same thing, eight ounces of our cheese. And it does look more yellow. It's fattier. So if you haven't seen, that's what it is. But have you ever tasted this without? No. Why don't you go ahead and take a taste of that? Whoa. It's like it wants to be butter. Yeah. It's much fattier. Mmm. Wow. Wow. That's a happy cow right there. <laughs> wow. Okay. So now that we have that, we're going to turn on the beater and we're gonna get this all combined and so it's all like one. Oh. 
Okay, we're already done here. I feel like I could just pour my coffee down there and make the best bulletproof coffee ever. Please don't, even though this is probably a good coffee cup size for you. <laughs> this would be an awesome mug and it has a handle on it, yes. Okay, so to this, we're gonna add the rest of our ingredients. We're gonna add in our allulose. We have a quarter of a cup of allulose. So we don't need a lot because the keto chow already has some uh, sweetener in it. And I'm just gonna turn this on on low while we're doing this. We're gonna add in one serving of keto chow. And I happen to have this bag, so we're just gonna use this. But again, you can use just a scoop if you only have the big bag. And you can use any flavor. I am gonna turn this off for a second, otherwise it's going to fly all over the place. Again, don't use chicken. Don't use the chicken one. <laughs> okay, we'll start mixing that. We're gonna add in our coconut milk or almond milk. This is like a blend. Turn it up a little bit. And then finally, one teaspoon of stevia, and I forgot to say the coconut milk, a half a cup of it. Again, the recipe is linked down below. It really smells like pudding, right? It does. Only not all the chemicals of buying like Jell-O instant pudding. No. Okay, it looks like it's pretty well incorporated. Oh my goodness, it smells like something my great aunt would make. I mean like that really homemade pudding. Okay, so we're gonna drop this down, take that out, we'll pull that bowl out and then we can put this off to the side. And this is just the Rachel batch. Now we'll make the one for the pie. Well, we're not quite done yet. Let's put this over here so everyone can see it and then we just gotta get- Oh, the whipped cream. The whipped cream, but we gotta put this in first. Let's get this all cleaned out. This is the only issue that I do have with these beaters is getting all of this goodness off. Well, that's why you have me. So, oh, so to that get you can all just of lick the it off and crannies. I like to be helpful. Of course, if you're making something that's like whipping up liverwurst, you don't see me like hovering like this. Okay, so now that we have that, and again, you can see the texture that we have. Take a look at that. Again, now Rachel has never made this before, so she didn't even watch me make it, so it's kind of like why I'm doing it. Right, and why but I'm looking at it like I'm watching Wild Kingdom. You can absolutely make this. Yeah. Just follow the steps, okay? This is an important step to do, because if you would have just mixed this all, it's not gonna have the consistency that you want. Oh. What we're going for is a cross between a mousse and a cheesecake, a no-bake cheesecake. Oh, okay. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to take this a whipped cream, and we're gonna, a little bit at a time, we're gonna fold it in. Do you know what folding is? Fold it in. Did you watch that one episode of, what is it, the pop series? No. Um, Schitt's Creek. And him and his mom are trying to do a recipe and they don't know how to cook, and they're talking about arguing, like, you fold it in. What does fold it in mean? Fold it in, just fold it in. Everybody knows, fold it in. So all you're gonna do is take it a little bit at a time, and just kind of like take your spatula and literally just keep folding it like this. And once you get, you know, most of it folded in. So folding is like a softer stir. Yes, you don't want to beat it because we're trying to keep the air. We're trying to maintain the air that we put into our whipped cream. Oh. And that's going to make this whole thing nice and fluffy. Now you don't have to get it completely mixed before you go into the next batch because we have a lot more. So Just trying to incorporate it a little bit at a time. So yeah, if I had not seen you do this, I would have slapped this beater on there and I would have mixed them together like that. That's exactly what I would have done. So I'm glad you're showing me this step because I would remake it when you're not home and then wonder why mine didn't come out the same way. Okay, now we'll just finish up with whatever is left in here. So it was about three folds. Yeah, three to four. I'm sure you're gonna make use that for your coffee later. I am, he knows me, he gets it. <laughs> this is why we work well together. And now you're just gonna make sure all of this gets incorporated really well. Okay, it looks like we're done here. I really feel like we just need to get a spoon and like just let me go into a quiet room. <laughs> and this is what it's gonna look like. 
You want to taste it? Do I want to taste it? Yes. It's done. <laughs> it's ready. Okay. Grab your pie crust. Put your pie crust out. And now all we got to do is fill the pie crust. This is a happy job. Oh my goodness. Now so again, much. this is going to make one deep dish pie crust. Pie. If you only have the smaller pies, the, the smaller pie pans, if you follow this in complete, complete recipe, you're going to get two of them. And I'm going to need to probably have two of them because I'm going to go to a party and I'll be like, this one's mine. Don't touch it. And then this one is for it to share with everyone else. And now all we got to do is spread it around. Pretty it up. Now this pie pan is probably a little bit too deep for like the amount that we made. Because this is like a super deep one, but you like a lot of crust. I love crust. And usually what I would do when I bake this, I kind of rolled it up around the edge here, you can see. Usually I'm going to come back along and just cut that because I don't want the top crust. <gasps> What's wrong with you? You know, you could also like leave it room to decorate it, like put a couple pipings of whipped cream on top of it. Do you know how much whipped cream is already in this and you want to add more? I know, but you're just prettying it. Well, I got a way to pretty it, don't worry. Here's how we're going to pretty it up. We're going to take a Lily's chocolate bar. Okay, it's getting more and more attractive. We're going to take just a piece of it. We're going to take a little grater. Aw, see, yeah. Now it's all fancy. There you go. Yes. And that's what you got. So now what we're going to do, if you, this is ready to go. It's ready to go. If you try to cut this, good luck serving it. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to stick it in the freezer for about an hour. You can also put it in the refrigerator, but stick it in the freezer, let it get nice and hard. And then I'm going to slice it. And then you can store it in the refrigerator. And anytime you want to serve it, you know, you'll have it. And you can actually just put this, put a nice cover on it and freeze it, which is another reason why with this glass one, I would usually take that top crust off because then I can put the cover on it because this is a lock and lock container. Well, and the lock and lock container will not allow me to do that. Well, cut the crust off, but then give it to me. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and stick this in the freezer. Okay, so we have that one in the freezer. We are not going to cut that one because we're saving it for Thanksgiving. So I'm just going to store it in the freezer until we're ready to go. But I wanted some right now. But Rachel wants some right now. Well, I do have a piece from another one I made. So we're going to go ahead and make the taste test, the pie that we made yesterday. I am not upset with this. Okay. Well, here's your fork. Well, you get the first one because I want the one with more pie crust on it. Okay. You ready? Yes. And look how thick it is. It's like staying on attached to it. Really and this well. piece has been on the counter for, I don't know, about 30 minutes. Yeah. So you ready? This is the pie that you're going to want to bring to a function where you know nobody. You have no friends. You're going to put this down and instantly you're going to have a bunch of friends because somebody's going to taste it and be like, who brought this pie? Yeah, it is that good. It's a I friend really, maker. It is like, again, like I said, super rich, super fatty, super delicious. It's very filling. And because of that, you are able to take that pie that we made and cut it into 12 slices and this is one twelfth of that pie. I mean, that is a sizable piece of pie. We're used to like cutting a pie into eight, but that's when they're half the size. Well, and here, because of what it's made up of, right. and it's so fatty and rich, this is a respectable size for Rachel. Don't like cut that pie with your eyes. Right. You know, cut it in 12 first and have two slices if, yeah. you, if it doesn't fill you up, but it will fill you up. Yeah. And so because of that, let's go over the nutrition on it. Now, I honestly, I kept changing it because I like, at first I looked at like the eight and I'm like, that is a huge piece. And like, I think even you would have trouble eating it because yeah. it is so fatty. So we, again, we cut it down into 12. So I have the nutrition written here. If you make it based the way we made it, the full pie in a big deep dish one, or if you cut it into two, just cut these in half, uh -huh. using the same ingredients that we use, which is what's very, very important. You know, sometimes like one almond flour is gonna be a lot more calories than others. So make sure whatever brands you're using, 
go ahead and enter in the chronometer to get the exact nutrition for what the products that you're using. Breaking this into 12 pieces, 348 calories per slice. It is, uh, let's see, uh, seven grams of protein, 31 and a half grams of fat. <laughs> we said it was fatty. Said it was fatty. 15 total carbohydrates, 4.7 grams of fiber, uh, 2.5 grams of sugar alcohols, that's from in the crust itself, and right. then four grams of allulose. So it's gonna bring it down to 3.8 net carbs per slice if you break it into 12. But this is a bunch of carbs that you will be happy you spent your carb budget on. It is a nice dessert, and again, especially with Thanksgiving, Christmas, Christmas. something like that, you're gonna want a little something. I challenge you to find somebody that knows after tasting this that this is a sugar-free pie. Especially the crust. The crust is crazy good. And the combination of it together is just amazing. High five, I gotta high five you, sir. I have to shake your hands. Amazing. <clears throat> Well, that is our video for today. Do us a favor, let us know down in the comments section if you do go ahead and make this. Also, let us know what flavor keto chow you're going to use because again, we use chocolate, but this is gonna work with any of them. It's gonna work with salted caramel. Don't It'll work beef. with pumpkin. Don't use no, beef. No, don't use beef. But it will work with pumpkin. It would work with, oh, oh, the banana. You can make a nice banana cream pie with this. I just thought of that off the top of my head. We're gonna have to make that one now. We are gonna have that to make that one. That may be Thanksgiving dinner now. Forget this one, we're making banana. For yeah, me. because if you grate the chocolate on top of it, it's like- Chocolate covered banana. Yeah. Mmm, man. <laughs> well, like I said, that is our video. So please do us a favor, hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon and that way every single time Joe comes up with something delicious, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. Bye.